judge our relationship with God. We judge where we're at in life on the Word of God. Not on our feelings, not on our circumstances, not on the cursed earth around us. You know, again, the earth is under a curse, so things go wrong. Things go wrong in a cursed world. That doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. Just because you're experiencing God's hand of blessing upon your life, that doesn't mean you're right with God. And just because God will come and visit your life and touch you and talk to you and even answer your prayers, that doesn't mean you're right with God. You see, folks judge themselves based on these things. You know, the Bible will tell us, Jesus said, he said that the Father makes his reign, his reign of goodness, come down on the just and the unjust. And the unjust. Why? Because he's good. I, I mean, you know, we go through life never knowing. Is it going to be a good day? Is it going to be a bad day? And we pray, oh God, let it be a good day today. Let it be a good day today, God, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You know, folks just as they look like on the inside, you know, just holding their breath, crawling their finger, dear Jesus, please. You know, instead of this, it's this, you know. They got their fingers crossed. Let it be a good day today, God. Let there be no problems today. Let everything go smoothly today. Thank you that everything's going to go smoothly today. You know, that's a laughable thing. It really is. It really is. You know, folks pray that way. And because, see, then they get about, you know, an hour into their day. Just finish, just finish praying it, you know. And next thing you know, it's pothole after pothole. Bam! I mean, they're boom! I mean, they're just hitting problem after problem. They're getting bounced around, knocked around, and then they think, "My God, I prayed. God didn't hear me." And now they're in a panic. Now they're all frustrated. Now they're all upset. And now their moods just drop. Now their moods just drop. And now they're now they're miserable for the rest of the day. But then they come to church, and they get stirred up. They get stirred up. You know, folks get. Feeling positive again. Bless God. Bless God. I feel good. Yeah, I feel good. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, they're ready to go. And they go out, and they get in the car, and there goes Margaret. Just one word for Margaret can change your life forever. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, well, there goes Margaret. Yeah, she, says, Jesus, she just had to say the wrong thing at the right time. Right? And so there you go. All of a sudden, pop. I mean, the bubble pops. I mean, and you're trying to hang on to the nagging bubble. The thing's already got a hole in it, and it's, I mean, it's deflating faster than you can handle it, and you're trying to hang on to it, trying to hang on, and then just, in, just out of a panic, you just sit there and say, bless God, I went to church today, I feel good, and you're not going to steal my joy. You're not going to steal my peace. Well, it's already gone, honey. It's already disintegrating. You know what I'm talking about? And then see folks, and they don't understand, they're just a victim. They're a victim to the ups and downs. Yeah, that's right. There's a victim to good things and bad things. It just happens. It just, stuff just happens. And that's really the attitude of most of the people in the world. It's not supposed to be that way. Just like that pilot in that airplane. He doesn't hit that throttle and go down that runway, go, well, whatever happens, happens. Sometimes we go up and stay up. Sometimes you don't. So everybody just put your seatbelts on and let's all hope for the best. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see, fasten your seatbelts because we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> We're going to try our best and wish and pray that we get over those trees up ahead. But I just don't know. Not really sure what to do about it. All I know is to hit this throttle. And so we'll just see how she goes. Wouldn't that be no, 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 no. The man's got purpose. He knows what he's going to do. I said he knows what he's going to do. He's going to operate according to that law of thrust and lift. He knows what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. He knows exactly what he's going to do and exactly when to do it to cause him to rise above, rise above the circumstances of life, rise above the gravity pull of this world. He knows what to do and he's going to do it. And with utmost confidence, no matter what goes on, no matter what kind of red lights start blinking, he knows what to do. But, you know, a lot of folks don't know what's going on, and they're going with folks that don't know what's going on, and it's not a smooth ride. It's nice you get in these commercial, you know, airplanes and stuff, and you, know, you, you go through some storms, you look out the window, all you see is, you know, just black, you know, just, just clouds. And, and, and the plane, plane's doing this, and, and yet folks just keep reading, and reading their paper, and, you know, they're just reading their paper. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. You know, and it's, it's a little bumpy. It's a little bumpy. It's no big deal. They have utmost confidence that that pilot knows what he's doing and his aircraft is capable of getting them through this storm. 
So even though they're hitting bumps down, the person that doesn't know that, maybe it's the first time up there, maybe their brother's the pilot. And, and the airplane is this little thing, you know, it goes, you know, you know. And, you know. and so, you know, you're, you're in there, you know, and it's, it's just different. It's just, you know, it's, 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 you're not sitting back just eating peanuts, unless you have faith in God. You know what I'm talking about? So it's just not, that's how it is in life. I mean, life would be so much smoother. I didn't say you're not going to go through storms. I didn't say altitude is not going to change dramatically and, er and erratically. I didn't say that. I didn't say your speed is not going to all of a sudden slow up. It's going to feel like the bottom's going to drop out of you. It seems like everything's going wrong. I didn't say that's not going to happen. But you could still sit in the airplane smooth eating your peanuts knowing I'm going to the other side. Amen. I'm talking about life. We can live life like this so that we're not up and down. And we're not just moving with the circumstances of life. Whatever's to be is to be. Whatever happens, happens. We're going through life with purpose. We're going through life with understanding. We understand the laws that govern things. We understand why, the why behind the things that happen in life. Amen. We don't have to go through life all in the clouds, all confused, just wondering. Thank God we don't. Thank God we got his word. And that's why he says in the book of Proverbs, in all you're getting, get understanding. Get understanding. In all you're getting, you're going to get something in life. Get understanding. A lot of folks are trying to get money. They're trying to get a better job. They're trying to get this, trying to get a spouse, trying to get out of a spouse, get away from a spouse, get a new spouse. Folks are trying to get all kinds of things. And he said, in all you're getting, get understanding. That's what you need to get. Amen. And thank God. Thank God that comes through the word of God. That's how we learn about life. That's how we learn about God and his ways. Don't try to figure it all out by looking at the circumstances of life and looking at the creation. We can learn things from the creation, but it all has to line up with the word. It, it, it must just confirm what we're seeing in the word. Are you with me? So, I mean, that's why this word is the most precious thing to us. Because in it, we get understanding. We get understanding. Not only can we know if we're in an airplane with somebody that knows how to fly. I'm talking about, you know, in life. You know, we, we know that we're, we're in life with somebody that knows what they're doing. We can, we can recognize, but we also can know what to do. We also can know what to do. And whenever I've gotten inside my brother's airplane, he's, you know, he's wanted to help me and teach me sometimes. He said, hey, because you've got a steering wheel in front of you, you know, and, you know up there in the in pilot's area. And uh, so he says, here, you just go ahead. Just, I'll show you all you got to do. Is, I said, no, no, I ain't touching anything. You pilot, you fly. I watch. I don't want to touch anything. I don't trust myself. I don't. He just said, you pull back a little bit. You know, who knows? I, just, you just fly the plane. <laughs> See, I don't understand this. I don't understand this, and I am going to pretend like I do. And a lot of folks go through life pretending like they understand. They stand up, they're going to show you the way of God. God in his sovereignty, sometimes he'll beat your brains in. Sometimes he'll bless you. Just depends. He works in mysterious ways. You can never really understand. You can never really understand. Well, that's not the Bible. That's not what my Bible says. We can understand. We can understand. Bless God. And we can all fly through life. We can soar through life. Hallelujah. Enjoying every mile. Every mile. God is good, isn't he? Well, you never know. Sometimes he's good. Sometimes he's not. You know, just look at people. That'll tell you that. No, you don't look at, look at the word. Look at the word. Look at the word and understand why good things happen to some and why bad things happen to some and why good and bad happen to some. We need to understand. And as we, see, as we learn these things, then we're able to experience more of the good and avoid a lot of the bad. Just like a pilot. Going, you know, he goes up there flying. You know, they got radar. They got, they got Doppler radar and all kinds of stuff. They could see what's up there. And, and I've been up in the airplane. My brother says, see that? See that right there? That's a, that's a thunder and lightning storm. See, that's got lightning in it. We're going to avoid that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, don't want to fly right into it. A lot of folks just going through life. I think I see something up there, Margaret. But bless God, I know that's where I want to go. <laughs> and they just run right into it, you know. Their flaky feelings tell them so. This is what they want to do. And they go right into it, right into the storm, just ignorantly get, just get knocked upside the head. But thank God, you and I can go through life, we can get around things. I said we can get around. There's a lot of things we can avoid. And we can purpose to land in the blessing. We can purpose to avoid the curse and purpose to land in the blessing so that we're not just stumbling into the blessing once in a while and stumbling into the curse. 
A lot of folks, they stumble into a blessing just when they feel like they're just so blessed. They stumble into a curse and it just sucks all the blessing that they received right out of their life. Undermines all the good that has, been, that has happened. How do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So we don't want to stumble around anymore. We want to soar. We want a purpose to be blessed. And if we go through a storm, that's fine. Praise God. We know what we're doing in it. And we know how to avoid some serious stuff. We know how to avoid many of the curses that people are falling into in life. Because we just understand what's going on. We just, un we just understand. So over here in Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, it says in verse... 14, the wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. Yet I myself perceived that the same event happens to them all. So as I said in my heart, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. Now who's writing this? Who's writing this? This is being written by a man by the name of Solomon who at this time was the wisest man on the face of the earth. Wisest man that ever walked the earth. Wisest man that ever walked the earth. And he makes this statement, he says, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. Just, to, I mean, it's, I'm, ha I'm having the same thing happen to me that's happening to the fool. And why was I then more wise? See, he doesn't have the answer. He doesn't have the answer. See, the Old Testament has limited light. You know, the whole Word of God is progressive revelation. From Genesis to the book of Revelation. It's progressive revelation. And so, you know, under the Old Covenant, they had limited, limited light. You and I should far exceed the wisdom that Solomon walked in. You see, a lot of Christians still look back and go, Well, he's the wisest man. He's, you and I should far exceed him. Far exceed him. We, we should be walking in a much higher wisdom. Why? Because the spirit of the living God who created all things, knows all things, is in us. And the Bible says over in 1 John 2.20 that you have an anointing of the Holy One and you know all things. And Jesus said to his disciples, come stir in your faith up for wisdom and understanding. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. You can't handle them now. However, when the, spirit of the when the spirit of truth has come, when the spirit of truth has come, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. So Jesus was telling them, you right now in your fallen state do not have the capacity for the things that I want to tell you and show you. But when the spirit of truth has come, when you get born again, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, your sins are washed away, and you're able to receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, then you will be able to receive everything that I want to tell you. You'll be able to handle it. You'll have the capacity for the wisdom and knowledge that I want to give you. Well, guess what? Solomon was in a fallen state. He was not born again. He was not born again. He did not have the spirit of truth. Yet he walked in incredible wisdom. It caused, it caused the people of his day, kings and queens, to come and be in awe and amazed at his wisdom. The things he was able to accomplish and do because of the wisdom of God that was diligently at work in his life was outright, was awesome. It was breathtaking. And yet you and I today, come on somebody, you and I today having the spirit of truth on the inside of us, how much wiser should we be? How much more understanding should you and I have today? It should far exceed, far exceed Solomon. See, we need to move on beyond that. Not just look up to that, but we need to move on beyond that. Get over here into the New Testament. And so, you know, he saw some things and he couldn't grasp it. He couldn't, he couldn't get the full understanding of a lot of things. He, got, he had a lot of understanding, but there was some things he couldn't grasp that you and I can grasp today. We understand because we have Jesus. Jesus has given us much greater light than uh, the prophets could ever have given. And so, he says, uh, you know, it, as it happens to the fool, it also happens to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart, this is also vanity. For there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever. Since that now, since all that now is will be forgotten in the days to come. And how does a wise man die? As the fool. So here's a wise man. 
But he's experiencing the same thing the fool's experiencing. And then there's fools, we could say, that are experiencing a lot of things that wise men experience. You know, the Bible says, luxury, Proverbs, luxury is not fitting for a fool. And yet, you know, there are a lot of fools walking in a lot of luxury. I thought of that scripture one time. I saw these, uh, these young folks, and they are in this really nice car, very expensive car, luxury. And, uh, boy, they got this music just... And, and, you, you, and here they go, they go by, and I'm like, you don't belong in that car. The Bible says that. Luxury's not fitting for a fool, but yet they're in that car. And then there's people that are real intelligent and really wise and really faithful at work and things, and they're riding to work on a bicycle. Or they're in the jalopy. You know what I'm talking about? Why is that? Why is it? People stumbling into things. People stumble into things. Some folks stumbling into good. Some folks stumble into bad. Usually our lives consist of a little bit of both. Just stumbling back and forth from one thing to the next. Amen. Well, the majority of people, this is how it works, and you're going to tell me it's different for you? Well, the Bible tells me it could be different for me. Amen. The Bible tells me it could be different for you. I'm going to follow the Bible. I'm not going to follow Aunt, Aunt Har Uncle Harold and, and Aunt Margaret. I'm not going to follow other people's experiences. I'm not going to judge myself and my life on experiences. Don't judge your life on experiences. If you do that, you're going to get all messed up. Because life, I mean, it will bring some pretty bad experiences your way. So you don't want to judge. And then, of course, there's good things going, going uh, you know, towards some people. And again, and it's helping them to believe everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's so good. I mean, it's just wonderful. And you look and you want to go, because you know where their heart is. They're not right. They're violating all the scriptures. Nothing's right in their life. But they think everything is right. Because of how things appear. So we don't want to be deceived by our circumstances. Judging where we're at based on our experience. And don't judge other people where they're at based on their experiences. Well, that person's got a lot of money. That person looks successful. They must be successful. Everybody's following them. I'm going to jump on the bed. No, don't judge people and don't judge yourself or anybody else by experience. But Jesus said, judge with, with righteous judgment. With righteous judgment. With God's judgment. Using God's word and God's Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And it's nice. You know, it's nice to know you got a smile on the inside. You're right with God. You're right. You're washed in the blood. You're walking in love. You're in faith about the situation. You know you're in faith about this. You keep checking your crawl. You're looking at all your gauges. Everything says, we're in, we're good. We're good. You're going through the clouds. You can't see the horizon. It feels like the plane's spinning out of control. But you look at all your controls. And you say, no, everything's good. Everything's on, right on course. Right on course. Everything is good. Because you're judging with righteous judgment. You're not judging based on your feelings or your experiences. And when people judge according to their feelings and experiences, then they do dramatic things. They do hasty things. They panic. And they cause a lot of their own problems. But it's nice to be able to go through life with a big smiley face on the inside, knowing I'm right with God, everything's right, everything's on course, everything's good. And you can go through life and just stuff's going on all around you, but you're going through life with a smile. You're going through life with peace. And if you check up on yourself and you feel a beep, 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 find out what the beep is. You've got to check on the inside. Something's telling you something's not right. Check that out. Find out what it is. And what? Repent. Fix it. And that's how you fix it. You repent. And the power of God comes in there, cleanses, works everything out. So there's things, you know, I've gone through in life. There's just so much to say along these lines. There's things that I've gone through in life. And, uh, you know, I've had to come back and I, I've had to check. And I think, well, you know, I, this probably isn't happening because of this. But because that's there, I'm going to deal with it. 
you know, just remove, just remove all doubt. You and I don't, shouldn't have any doubt. There should be no doubt. If there's anything that causes any kind of doubt about where you are in life, don't cover it up. Don't try to justify yourself. Deal with it. Confront it and confess it so that you have complete confidence. The Bible says, by faith and a good conscience, we're able to lay hold of the promises of God. <laughs> Amen. You got to have that good conscience. You got to have that, good, that otherwise it'll mess up your faith. So you got to know. You got to know. Thank God we can know. Thank God. We, if there's any doubt, well, I'm not sure. This could be because of me. Well, what, what do you mean specifically? Break it down. Break it down. What do you mean? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. We'll find out. What is it? What is it? Examine yourself. Are you missing it anywhere? You know, I've gone to God. And I've said, God, am I missing it anywhere? Have you ever prayed like that? Lord, am, am I missing it anywhere? And one time, one time I prayed that prayer. And this came right back. This thought came right back at me. Are you? I know. Do I have to tell you? Don't you know whether you're missing it or not? And if you really want to know the truth, if you want to know if you're right or not, you'll know. A lot of folks don't want to know. Because again, why? Because they enjoy that sin. They enjoy that darkness. That's their form of entertainment. There's some pleasure there. There's something to that. There's some security there. So a lot of folks don't face up to things and they become blinded. Their hearts become hard. And they can go beep, beep, beep. And they don't hear it anymore. But it's still there. The problem's still there. But they don't hear the beep. They don't feel the conviction. That doesn't mean the problem went away. And they go through life. Isn't God good? Isn't God wonderful? And, and if you can open them up in the spirit, if you can open up, look into the dashboard, you see, whoop, 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 I mean, everything's going haywire. But they're out here. Oh, it's sunny. I prayed yesterday, and God heard me, and he answered my prayer, and God told me. I heard people say, yeah, I was in this R-rated movie. It was really good. You know, and God showed me this great illustration. I preached it to my congregation. I went, <laughs> And then you go to God and say, God, why did you talk to him in the already movie? And he said, my rain's in there. It's raining in there. They got leaks in the ceiling. My rain's coming down. They had faith to hear from me. And it hit him. Hit him right there. In a nasty part of the movie. So it must be okay then. God is here with me and he's eating the popcorn right here next to me. He's giving me illustrations for my congregation while I'm watching a triple R rated movie. So everything must be great. Isn't that great? It's great. No. Remember Samson? He was in an X rated movie over at Delilah's Theater. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Call you with me, so don't look at me like that. You remember that? He's over there with Delilah. Right? And then in the middle of the night, he gets up, shakes himself, goes out and rips the bars off the city by the power of God. I'm God's man. This must be okay because God is here. And you can see the process. You know, it was just a little bit of sin. It was a little bit of sin. The power was still there. A little bit of sin. The power was still there. So he cre increased the magnitude of his sin. I'm talking about Samson, Samson and Delilah. You know, and so here he is, and he cr increases the magnitude of his sin more and more and more because, after all, nothing bad is happening. God is still, he's still hearing from God. The blessing of God is still on his life. <laughs> yeah. And so he thinks everything is great. You know what I'm saying? He gets up, flows, man, flows in the power, knowing that what he's going to do tonight. And he wasn't right. And he had become dull. He had begun to think everything was great. That God approved of his lifestyle. But he's reaping all those consequences now in eternity. He reaped it heavily at the end of his life. How would you like somebody to come up to you with a knife and gouge your eyes out of your head? Well, let's, get, let's really get a picture. Because you read things and it's like you just read over. How would you like somebody to take you by the head and gouge each one of your eyes out? This is scriptural. Don't get, don't get nervous. Gouge your eyes out, put you in chains, 
and put you out there in a prison. You can't see what's going on. This wasn't a clean surgery. This, this is nasty. This guy's in excruciating pain. He's in chains. They're beating him. They're whipping him. They're mocking him. They're doing things unimaginable. And here he is in this prison. And you got a whole city of people just jeering and laughing and mocking, thinking this is the greatest thing. That was the end. That was the end of this man. Why? Because he, he didn't get it. He didn't get the message, the controls. He didn't, his heart was hard. Why? Because everything's good. Everything's all right. I must be all right with God because look, I'm prospering. And you must be wrong because you're not prospering. Maybe not. Maybe, but maybe not. How do we know? Let's judge with righteous judgment. Let's judge with the word of God. Can you say amen? While many people wander and stumble through life, those who are led by God walk secure and safe, even in uncertain times. In this series by Stephen Fraser, How to Be Led by God, you will learn the many different ways God seeks to communicate with you. To order this six CD teaching series for only $25, call 888-542-2555. You can also order online at lofbc.org. Don't be left wandering through life. Order How to Be Led by God today. Life of Faith Bible Church. Join us Sunday mornings at 10.45 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us online at lofbc.org or call 888-542-2555. For a CD or DVD of today's message, write to us at Life of Faith Bible Church, 14200 Spiegel Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40299 or call 1-888-542-2555. You can also visit us online at lofbc.org.